Welcome back into the Enrichment Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Tanova Healthcare, and they have all types of health care options for you, whatever you may need, whether it's cardiac care or cancer care or orthopedic care, home care, hospice services, you name it, Tanova Healthcare is the group to turn to. And you hear that word care an awful lot. And a lot of times, you know, you go to the hospital and you still feel like you're number 16385 and you're stuck in one of those hospital gowns you don't like. Well, I went through a pretty big health issue at Tanova Healthcare a couple of years ago, and I felt the word care. And I can promise you uh, that that made me feel a lot better in what I was going through. And I'm sure that uh, they do the same for everybody out there. And that's the best, that's the best thing I can say about Tanova is how much I felt that those folks cared about me. So you should check them out if you have any health care needs. Tanova Health Care. All right. Um, guys, I want to quickly run through Tennessee's recruiting class. A lot of folks worried that Tennessee's number two recruiting class right now could fall apart down the stretch. So I asked Josh Ward of uh, WNML 990, Jimmy Station, you own it. And uh, also he does recruiting for us at MrSEC.com. Uh, I asked him to give me a list of who he felt were locks from Tennessee's 31-man commitment class right now. All right. Now let's run through these. You've got, uh, well, I'll just let you read it there. You've got both the Barry twins, but a lot of fours and threes up and down that line. That's the reason that Tennessee is, is uh, number two in the nation behind only Alabama. But you see, all these guys Josh believes are locked in. Let's go to the next page. If we can, do we have the next page? There we go. There's the next page. Again, you see uh, Mixon down there isn't, doesn't have a rival's grade as of yet. But again, more fours and threes. You've got Jalen Hurd with a five. All these guys viewed as locks by Josh Ward. We've got another list. Let's go ahead and click it over. You see those fellows right there. I could run through every one of those names, but no need. One of those is a mistake, though. It's Coleman Thomas and Corey Thomas. So it's not C-A, it's C-O, and that's my fault. Uh, all told, 27 of the 31 commitments that Tennessee has right now, Josh Ward feels, are locks. Locks <laughs> right now to, to stay with them. In case you're worried, oh, they could lose some of these guys. Apparently not. Now, here's how he had it listed in terms of guys who aren't locks. Firm. I said, who's a firm commitment? Somebody that you feel pretty good about but isn't a lock. Chris Weathered, linebacker. That's it. And the reason is he's a non-midterm Juco guy. And in Josh's mind, that makes him a little bit questionable. I ask about Shaky. Who's Shaky? Uh, these guys are committed, but it could still be a battle. That's Gavin Bryant. He's got academic issues, and Auburn could make a push at him because he's an Alabama native. Trayvon Polk tore his ACL, and UT's kind of looking at other running backs, which means he may look at other schools. And then we got one guy in the bump zone, and that is Jerome Dews, a two-star player, and he could get bumped if UT lands another commitment. Now look at this. There are still a lot of commitments possible out there. You got Adore Jackson, five-star cornerback, Clifton Garrett, four stars, Josh Malone, everybody's wanting to see what Malone does, four-star, he'll announce on December 4th, Charles Mosley, David Sharp, Johnny Dixon, Travis Rudolph. Some of these guys are long shots, but they're still on the list of, of, of players that Tennessee's looking at, Daryl Scott, Darrell Williams, then you've got Juco players, Avery Genesee, uh, Abu Lamine, or Abu Lamine, or Abu Lamine, whatever his name is. <laughs> DJ Petway, now that one's interesting because he was booted from Alabama's team this offseason for his part in, a, in an assault and robbery. So we'll see if Tennessee goes after DJ Petway. He was on campus this year for a visit. Jerron Reed and Owen Williams, all JUCO guys. That's a pretty long list. Here's the thing. If you're concerned about Tennessee losing guys, I mean, Josh follows it as closely as just about anybody out there. He thinks 27 of the 31 are, are locks. So, that, one, that's incredibly impressive, if that's the case. It also speaks to the fact that this class has spent a lot of time recruiting one another. Been a lot of social media in this thing, this legacy class. But um, the, the other thing it shows is just how silly the soft cap that the SEC put out there was. And these guys think they can get more than 30. They have to because you've got – 30 commit, we got 31 commitments. Everyone is under the impression you can only sign 30. They're still recruiting more guys. Okay, so let's assume they can get more in there. Uh, Jimmy, you think there might be a, a secret plan that they might have? Well, I, I was told there was a secret plan, and I was told we'll tell you on signing day what we did. But uh, I did read in the New Sentinel today that uh, it, I think it was New Mexico that had a deal where if you don't come on an official visit and if you don't have a home visit with that person, he is a, quote, non-recruited walk-on. If he gets there, then in August you could give him a scholarship and he counts toward next year's class. 
I don't know any players on the commit list that fit that category. That Tennessee has not recruited. Correct. Yeah. That they've not that they haven't, haven't had, had a home and haven't had them into campus. Right. Officially. So I, I don't know if anybody fits that. Uh, I think Dues is a very good candidate for a gray shirt or a no shirt if he doesn't agree <laughs> to the gray shirt. Right. <laughs> there sure be, yeah, there may be another gray shirt in there out yep. of this group. Maybe a Palk fits in there because of his injury. So they, they may be looking at trying to do that, but I don't know what the strategy is. I still don't see how you can get past the 25 and the, uh, and the 85, 25, 30, and 85, uh, unless you're going to gray shirt some people. So, look, the reality of it is you've got some guys in that list that probably, if you get some of those other guys in there, some of the guys are going to get bumped. That's, that's mm -hmm. most likely what's going to happen. Nick Saban has taken a lot of heat over the years for doing that very same thing. My question is, is anybody around here going to care <laughs> if Butch Jones winds up doing it? Yanks a scholarship from a kid. Basically, you've offered it, then you come back the last <laughs> minute and say, oh, sorry, we're out of room. You'll have to find another place at the last minute. It's been Everybody's hit Saban for it. Is anybody going to hit Butch Jones for it? The I don't, go ahead. I don't like it, but if you do it, you better do it soon. Right. So at least give that person a chance over a six or eight week period Instead to find Jan another school. Don't tell him January yeah. the 28th. Right. Okay, you're gray shirt, and we're not going to offer you. Right. And, that, and that's the same yep. thing I was going to say was if you do it with plenty of time, a lot of these kids are going to have a lot of options. But if you do it after January the 1st and you've been sitting there, if you're the kid and you've been telling other teams go away, go away, Tennessee, Tennessee. No, and I, and I think Tennessee fans, I'm going to say that the majority of them wouldn't want to see that. I don't think they would want the negative PR that comes with it. I think uh, they'll ex they'll take it though to get if it, yeah, they think it makes them better and if he doesn't bump uh, any of these legacy kids in this class, yeah. which I don't think he would. Right. And it, it, it's kind of the nature of the beast in a way because recruiting is such a moving target. I mean, if it, it's this human nature that if there is a really high value five star recruit that at the closer to signing date says I want to come to Tennessee. You're going to find a place for that kid somehow, some way. And I don't know that you can be so creative, Jimmy, when – how come some other schools aren't doing that in the SEC? If it's that yeah. creative, yeah. you're yeah. not the only one that's going to be onto this little scheme. Yeah, Houston Nutt would have figured it out yeah. long ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 53 signees. <laughs> Chuck, you were kind of hard when you heard that Conzo Martin was kind of shifting a guy out to bring somebody else in. And that was, But that was, but that was somebody was that's already on scholarship. You're talking about Mac and Julie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was somebody that's already here that's on scholarship. This, there's a lot of shady things that go on in recruiting, and it's not just Tennessee. And you're in a pretty much a desperate situation to improve this program. And you've got uh, to bring him He players. didn't run Mac and Julie off. No, but I mean, he. I don't think he encouraged him either. That was Mac and Julie's choice, right. I believe. Anyway, the, uh, the issue is uh, with UT right now. You need the bodies. It yeah. does go on everywhere, or everyone at one time or another. It's not everywhere every year. Uh, Can they run a 4-4? Four, four? That's the, what I want to know. The, the, the <laughs> issue, though, is you, you don't want to see this. I mean, and, and to do it now, you're still telling a kid, let's say some kid has not taken official visits anywhere. He's been Tennessee true and, true and through, yep. and now you tell him that, well, you can go make a visit, but you're not going to visit on game day. You're not going to be hanging out with the team and doing all that stuff. So you've still handicapped the kid, even if you tell him today that we're going in a different direction. So it's, it is unsavory, but it's part of the game. And that's the reason you need to have an early signing date for football. Let some of these kids go ahead and put their names down on the dotted line. Do it for the kids, not so much for the school. Of course, you wonder then if, sc if schools would say, yes, here's, the, here's the, the thing to sign right now. Why don't we wait until the later signing period? Because if they're going to bump these guys later, they may be sitting there at the early signing period saying, do we really be. want him well, to I, end I, in the I paper mean, now? And that would, that would be a tip off to the to kid. The kid. Yeah. If the early signing maybe period, maybe one reason the coaches are so much looking. against the early signing period. Yeah, think of that strategy. These 20 can sign, but these other 11 can't. Yeah, yeah. can't. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, when we come back, we've got a new basketball analyst on the program. We're going to talk about uh, the key members of this year's squad, break them down person by person from someone who was on the, uh, the Tennessee group, the staff over there, just last year. Come on back on the Enrichment Sports Source. You are watching East Tennessee's first and only year-round sports talk show on television. <laughs> 